Come on, Wave Master. What is going on? Come on, let me show you my middle finger. Boom, the middle finger has spoken. <laughs> awesome, dude. What's up, friends of the good mood? This is Manny, and welcome back to the next War Robot session here, showcasing one of the most powerful nerfs we ever had in War Robots, in my opinion. You're seeing a setup right here from a pre-nerf phase. Uh, it's a uh, many months old video footage, and it shows the Fafnir with the uh, hail weapons, or Scotty, sorry, Scotty weapons before they were nerfed. And you can see how much you were able to do with the, with the Fafnir. The Fafnir used to be so much faster when it flies. And it is going to be that here in this video. And also these weapons, you see how fast, how fast they recharge, how much damage you can do with them, and how little reloading time or downtime you have in between a firing. These things deal insane damage and they were at that time, the best weapon in the game, and they were, well, oh, what a surprise, they were new. By the way, well, you're also going to get some awesome gameplay from the Sharenga with Grom shotgun, so that will also be here. Um, but yeah, I want really to, to basically showcase uh, the insanity that we simp, that we live in war robots from one moment to the other. It can happen that whatever you loved about the game or what setup that you prefer um, may just uh, be completely ruined from one moment to the other. And uh, this was one of the craziest moments I have witnessed. We've had many nerfs and many slight buffs or whatever, but this much of a difference um, is, is something new. Apparently I didn't even have the legendary pilot at the time that would let me bypass the energy shields. Uh, look at this, we're amplified pretty well with our damage output on the built-in weapon. Uh, also something that makes the Fafnir really crazy. Uh, and you can still do that by the way. Oh my lord, how, did, how long did that shield last? Um, you can still do this by the way, but uh, it's, um, yeah, it, it used to be, I think even that one used to be more powerful. Now we're getting attacked by a bunch of people over there who are all in stealth. Um, also stealth uh, is, uh, is something that you see uh, a little more, I would say, these days compared to back in the days with the cloaking module now. Uh, people have this more. Um, but really, the firepower of these weapons, we, we're like continuously firing at 600 meters range with a freezing effect on top with maximum damage and this I think here may be the first time I ever have to really reload on those weapons, right? Also you see the user interface is a little different because the game always gets a little overhaul also when it comes to that. Um, but generally uh, this is the, the biggest nerf I have, I, I feel like I remember in War of Lights. What is the biggest nerf you guys remember? Tell me. I would really like to, uh, to hear because uh, I think this feeling might be very subjective. Maybe you have a favorite setup that you used to run and it used to run well and then something happened and it was worthless. Um, another example for me here would be uh, my favorite weapons, Vortex, Thermite, you know, Aphid. I, I love these weapons so much but the entire uh, shield pop-up meta of those drones kind of really ruined them completely um, and uh, it, it, there's basically no really any point in running vortex and thermite anymore these weapons they just can't perform in the current state of the game anymore so again this is an example of of something I personally loved and enjoyed a lot that from way, basically one moment to the other or it was a short time period in which it basically became obsolete or um, yeah useless and no longer working and uh, if you try to run, that's the interesting thing, you can still replicate that. You can try and run Fafnir with the Skadi today. Um, and you'll find that this is not going to be very much fun anymore. Because you'll be run reloading like all the time now. Uh, you have 5 seconds of firing and then you're empty. You have done a decent damage in these 5 seconds. I believe the damage output within the 5 seconds has actually not changed. But you'll end up running into this uh, into this cap of your firepower, this, this fire damage cap that you just can't get past because the reload will just ruin it. So here we have a Grom shotgun boy. Uh, he makes the right choice here to uh, to stop me from uh, dealing damage. Therefore he's getting to... Uh, oh boy, there's also a Titan coming up. Alright, I was able to drop him. Um, but yeah, I think we're not gonna do much anymore from this point on with 36,000 health, although with all weapons still remaining, I guess I can just go here and snipe, you know? And uh, and that I can do extremely well, even against uh, the powerful um, Sharenga over there. We have so much firepower in this thing. It's so crazy. 
And I feel like this is some is something I want to convey as a message also to Pixonic, is that uh, these nerfs, they're they're just not okay. Because this this is not a game where you get things for free. This is a game where you also invest real world currency into these items. So selling it, selling something that um, um, you know, and then pre and later nerfing it or making it less useful, uh, it should not be uh, allowed. Uh, let's let's put it how it is. Let's say how it is. It should not be allowed. This should be not possible. And there are many games on the market or on the out there who do this sort of thing. But there are also games who are very successful who have made compromises on this thing. If you remember War Gaming from World of Tanks, for example, there's a lot of tanks who receive nerfs and buffs. But here's the thing: premium tanks that you buy from money, they they just don't get nerfed. They don't get touched. So War Gaming is very careful about the premium tanks they implement because they know they can't nerf premium tanks later because they have been sold and so they will not be nerfed or touched in any way if they are introduced way too powerful you know what happens <laughs> they will remain way too powerful because they are premium tanks and they were sold and so they can't be touched and um, and I think this is how it should be this is how it's correct uh, and therefore uh, there has to be a very very good thought uh, <laughs> did you just one hit kill me look 114,000 HP I have with my ability running Boop, that's it perfect shot nice job dude um, yeah so uh, I, I believe there was a time when premium tanks were nerfed to in world of tanks but ever since the last couple of years I think wargaming is no longer doing it and that's correct, in my opinion. And this is something that Pixonic should do too. If there's something that is being sold, and let's... Uh, I, I think we don't really have premium tanks in, or premium robots. Every new robot that comes out is being sold and is basically a premium robot, so to speak, right? Um, and therefore, the balancing must be very careful, or the, they must be very careful with the balancing, in my opinion. Something new that comes out, uh, Pixonic should need to consider how strong it might be in the future, how it how it will impact the game balance, and uh, and so that it basically gets introduced in a way that lets it perform within the meta uh, and without ruining the meta, without requiring. That's what I'm getting it. Without requiring a subsequent nerf later, right? But that's not how it works. Things are coming in. They're way too good. We all know they are way too good, and they will re receive the nerf later, and that is common pr common knowledge now in War of Ones, and it's a really, really bad way to handle things, in my opinion. Because it can happen, as a result, that a setup you li like, that you love, that you invested in, like this one here, simply stops being fun overnight. Uh, and yeah, th that's not that's not the point of, uh, of the game, and that's not how it should be. Also, because it, remem it, it, it makes it so that uh, you'll, you, you'll be, you know, you think twice before you, uh, you know, invest into the next time into into the tank, into a robot or whatever, you know. Um, oh, maybe last time I invested and then my tank or ro robot became worthless. I now I'm in the tank thing. Um, my robot became worthless a few moments later. So why should I do it again? You know. Also from uh, from this side of, um, it might be useful to uh, think about it. If people recognize there's a long-term gain from uh, spending a ten, a 10 or 20 or maybe even more in it, um, yeah, maybe they're more likely to also invest and have fun doing it, you know? And, and not regret it later. Because I think one of the more strongest feelings that you remember later is regret. If you regret a, a decision or a purchase before, there's a chance you may not do it again. And this uh, nerf thing... Uh, that kind of fosters these feelings. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So I guess we're. Uh, I've got, I guess I've been able to make my point here. Um, let's just enjoy the rest of the battle a little bit. Uh, draw the comparison to the today's um, Fafnir, Sc uh, Fafnir with Scotty. Um, one thing you can still do, and that's pretty crazy about the Fafnir, is you can still like bring up the shield at the right time. And then absorb a whole lot of damage and then amplify your build in weapon to an incredible amount of damage. You can still run around basically one or two hit kill people all the time for as long as you fly if you have been able to amplify that damage output uh, to the fullest with your flight. Uh, before, or when you entered your flight by blocking insane damage. Like for example, uh, um, oh here's a, here's a practical example where you can make it happen very easily, is when uh, a titan fires. Um, 
The Kisten and Bulava at you. You see it coming, and then you activate the shield, bop, bop, and you block all that, like, 300,000 damage. Maybe another guy shoots into you at the same time, and you have amplified that damage output so much, you basically go through Titans and regular robots in seconds now. And, and this is something you can still do today, and I, I, it's... I used to say it needs to be fixed, but at the same time, it kind of makes the Fafnir still fun. It's an exciting thing about the Fafnir that requires a certain, a uh, certain thing to happen. It requires a certain situation uh, or a certain um, moment to happen, and then you can pull this off. And also only if you manage to stay alive for long enough, because the sirens and harpies are able to follow you with their homing bullets and bypass your shields and take you down with your Fafnir really quickly, force you into landings and so on, right? But if you are allowed to pull this off, it's still incredibly fun today. And I think I'll probably dedicate a video to this soon where I um, amplify the built-in weapon of the Fafnir to, I don't know, a thousand percent or so. I don't know what if there is a cap even. Um, but uh, yeah, we can do it and then just basically do the, the old Fafnir dominance still in today's meta. But of course, I may require a lot of tries in doing it because of the fact that, uh, yeah, uh, it's not so easy to survive with that Fafnir for so long anymore. But it's still a rather tanky robot when it walks with its resistance being up and all that, so it has still a lot of firepower. In my opinion, the Fafnir is not a bad robot now, right? Um, because, uh, it, yeah, it received a crazy nerf. It's not a bad robot. Um, it's actually still pretty good. Uh, but there is a big difference between what it was and what it is now. And uh, I think we can all see this here very uh, obviously, uh, or obvious in this video. Uh, also because most, it's it's even crazier because I chose the combination between Scotty and Fafnir. It's like both things have been hit so hard with a nerf that in this setup now there's like nothing left anymore compared to <laughs> before. Okay, there is an enemy titan. I think I'm not gonna make it. Will I? I'm landing. I actually survived. Good. I, I deserve some coffee for that. Hmm. Hmm. Nice cappuccino. Yes. All right. So, uh, I will I jump into my Sharenga any second now? I might do. Oh, I want to get into flight. Maybe I can just defeat the uh, this guy here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm getting another flight. Let's see if we can beat him. He's firing into me. Oh, he stopped firing now. Oh, he has lock-on weapons. I can beat him. Easy. I can beat him no problem. All I have to do is constantly just do this. See? Although I'm down to 7,000 health, I can con I can beat him, probably, maybe, I don't know. Ooh, I need to get behind him. No! <laughs> he was smart, he flew backwards and he was able to do it. I, I was gonna say, I can beat him if I constantly abuse his lock-on. And just go uh, above him, force him into a, um, into a lock-on again, and so on. But then he realized what he needed to do and it worked. Damn it. <laughs> Alright. The Grom Sharanga is deployed. Uh, this is something I, I ran for a while and something I really enjoyed but at the same time it's so difficult to make this thing work. Here I used the timeout to uh, to prevent him from getting in cover fast. Uh, dude, I walk out here, all three guys are shooting me, all two. And the Explo weapons were already in the game with uh, Incinerator, Skelt and... Uh, what's the other one? Incinerator, Skelt and... Uh, another one. Hmm. Uh, I don't actually remember what the small one is called. Hmm. The medium one. It's Scourger. Yes. Incinerator, Scout, and Scourger. Small is Scout. That's right. Alright, now I've got it. By the way, also back in the days, you may not remember, or maybe you do, you couldn't kill last standing robots with Titan weapons. That's something they did later. They changed last stand so that the, um, so that the last stand basically is no, it does not provide invincibility. But instead, it gives you incredible resistance, but resistance will be bypassed by max level Titan weapons, so you can take them still down when their last stand is running. Uh, also, it means that now you can repair your HP while last stand is running, and that I think is the reason why they changed the last stand, because you would always lose your repair, <laughs> he's landing on me, uh, your, your repair module, uh, because it, it triggered a repair that is not going to work because your HP is frozen during that time period. Alright, so, a lot of changes. How? He, he did more damage than I do. How dare you, sir? How dare you do more damage than I? <laughs> Alright, back in the, uh, in the map abyss. I think one last time, I'm not sure, but this is gonna be a longer video. We're 
14 minutes in or 15 minutes and it's gonna be 20 minute long video I've cut together a long list of gameplay for you here uh, I remember I played uh, I recorded this gameplay and I wanted to show you a beast setup of a Fenrir or Fafnir then the Fafnir got nerfed and then other things came out and I lost the footage or basically rem did not remember it and now I found the video footage again on my hard drive and I was like hmm interesting see the difference between the old and the new Fafnir of Skadi I think we should show this here um, yeah, so coming in, look at this. Look how fast people go down. It's so crazy, man. It's, it's just such a difference. We're, we're basically now we're firing with two Scotties. And I think those two Scotties we're firing here on the outer sides are actually more powerful than uh, the four Scotties we have now in today's meta. I believe it's almost like 50% of a, of a difference in terms of firepower reload and all that. Maybe, yeah, it might actually be true. Also, another thing they changed, uh, you may have seen it here in the video, uh, the, the, the aiming arc. Every time I go above an enemy, uh, I have a problem aiming down on the enemy. They have, they had this time where uh, the aiming arcs were somehow restricted on newer robots, and that was weird because uh, normally newer robots are more powerful. But in that in that particular thing, uh, newer robots would have this problem of aiming, uh, only being able to aim at things that are right directly in front of it. As soon as things are above or below in front of them, they would lose their aiming arc uh, and they could not target the enemy anymore. That, that is a very weird thing. They tested for a while and it turned out to be a nightmare because uh, you would be able, all the other robots would be able to shoot you and your robot can't look down on the enemy or can't up look up. It's also something that changed. Uh, I think they don't do this today anymore. Although I feel like the new Indra Titan when I played it recently on the test server, I feel like it was actually having that issue a little bit. The Indra Titan would not be able to aim up as much as uh, the... Uh, other titans, the Mugomets or the um, uh, the Ao Ming would be able to aim down. I think, I think. I'm not quite 100% sure, but I think that was the case. Hmm. So yeah, again, ladies and gents, please let me know um, what uh, what your in your uh, experience in the in the entire history of War Robots, what's the nerf that sticks with you? What's the nerf you just couldn't get out of your mind because it was so bad for you? Uh, it hit so hard, it was such a, such an impactful nerf to you. Because maybe you have made an entirely different experience and you didn't even notice this much because you weren't playing Fen Fafnir or you weren't playing Skadi. Maybe you made an entirely different experience and, uh, and you had your own incredibly nightmarish nerf that uh, basically changed the game overnight for you. Boom, boom, boom. Wow, this, this Sharenga dude, it's just... It's just so brutal. It's just it opens fire. It's it like it screams in your face when it fires. It's like ah! And we are you're on the receiving end and you're standing there in front of this screaming uh, 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 Sharenga with its shotguns screaming at you. And while it screams, its breath like creates an orcan or a hurricane on you. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. That's how I imagine the Sharenga to how it how it feels when the Sharenga fires at you with these shotguns at short range. It's, it screams at you like a crazy freaking maniac. Look how much damage that, uh, even the, the Typhon robot takes at the range, you know? We're like 300 meters away and you see always like a 20% chunk going away when we fire. It's crazy. Boom. Boom. Uh, but, but Titan resistance was bypassed. Uh, by uh, No, the resistance of the leech was bypassed by the Titan weapons. That worked. Boom. I can hit him. I can hit him perfectly there. Look, he's, he's not safe behind this thing. Because I'm shooting from above and I have this cover that protects me. Oh, no. I got... Oh, actually, it's good. I got timed out. Now, after my time, I... Uh, what the heck? Dude, I timed him out and it didn't work. Did you see that? What? Wait a minute. What just happened? I used my timeout on him. You know what I think happened? I think, although the animation of my timeout was gone, although my timeout uh, stopped, apparently, I, me being timed out, the game still counted me as being timed out, and therefore I was unable to use my timeout on him. I think that's what actually happened here. That's why I'm losing incredibly much HP and my weapon. That would not have happened otherwise. Thankfully, I lost the left weapon. I can still shoot over the cover here well. No problem. 
Uh, but that's crazy, man. Uh, uh, I didn't... I actually forgot that you can't time out people when you're timed out, too. Now we have a Nodens who heals me up. That's crazy. So this guy... Okay, he's gone. Um, oh, here comes... I, I, I had the cloaking detection. Uh, cloaking module. He's landing now. And he gets the shield now. Ugh. Come on, die already, for the love of God. <laughs> Jesus, with his 1% HP. Also, another thing, you may rec recognize the difference. Um, back in the day, look at this guy. He would be... Uh, oh, now I'm suppressed. I think this is the, probably the moment I die here, is it? So many hawks. Um, you used to be able to have uh, suppressed being suppressed all the time. This is something I was asking for so long in War Robots and Pixonic actually did it. I'm still very thankful for this. Um, remember back in the days, you had a resistance against... Um, oh man, this poor, uh, poor uh, Nodens. Uh, resistance against negative effects, it only lasted for 5 seconds. So you were affected by a negative effect. Then for 5 seconds you had this, like suppression and lockdown. Then you could freely move for five seconds, and then you can be resuppressed again for five seconds, uh, um, or five seconds later. So it's like 50% uh, of the playtime you were able to be suppressed and locked. It's crazy. Such a big uh, thing. And it lasted for so long in War Robots until finally it changed, and Pixonic finally realized it, um, that w what I'm asking for makes sense to pre please free up people's suppression and, lock uh, and, and lockdown so at least you have. Uh, a longer resistance between the negative effect pop-ups and they made it so that now uh, we have a 10 second immunity against uh, this negative effects um, and that really really impacted a lot oh man oh now this guy I have to time out this guy here I did I timed him out so now I can kill him very nice that was good that was uh, that was a really good uh, maneuver here wow did I just one hit kill the Demeter what the heck Woods! Yeah, there he goes. And I only, I only have two weapons left. And I one-hit killed him. And the fact that I timed him out made it so that I could kill the um, the Titan and uh, here, the Minos. Because he would have other, had to cast the shield over him. And because I timed him out, uh, his shield was also timed out, uh, basically prevented. And, well, now I only have the middle finger! Look! I have the middle finger left on the Sharenga! I don't want to show it into the camera, but you'll see it all on screen. The middle finger has been deployed. Ladies and gentlemen, it's middle finger time. Come on, Titan. Come on, Wave Master. What is going on? Come on, let me show you my middle finger. Boom! The middle finger has spoken! <laughs> awesome, dude. Oh, man, it's been a while since I last uh, had a situation like this. So, deploying the, uh, the Ravana, the R-bomb. Very nice. So, 6 million damage done here. We're at the end of this video. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had some fun time in the video here. Uh, tell me again your most powerful nerfs you have experienced, or maybe buffs. If you remember an incredible buff that changed your gameplay suddenly overnight, tell me about it too, because these are the things for this video. Um, so yeah, have a good one, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next video. Manny signing off. Bye-bye.